All righty, we got two shows to talk about here, including a uh, newsworthy edition of AEW Dynamite. As we have a new women's champion after a year, Britt Baker was defeated in Thunder Rosa's hometown in the cage match. And so Thunder Rosa is your new AEW women's champion. And uh, they had a bloodbath. There was blood, there was thumbtacks, there were chairs, there was violence. Her hometown crowd, this was a great crowd for the most part. Uh, there was a point early in the cage match where they were kind of quiet, but then uh, they busted out those gimmicks and they weren't quiet anymore. And yeah, it, uh, it was, the, I, I thought like, um, I didn't think it was like, like some of the stuff in the match didn't look that great, but the storytelling of the match was great. You know, it was like they, they did callbacks from the uh, Lights Out match and they did like you know a bunch of stuff to tease different things and they had a ref bump and they did all that and then um you know rosa got a big entrance coming out with mariachis and eventually um she did the thunder driver into thumbtacks and won the championship um after she got the tease near fall when the referee was down so you know basically playing off what happened on uh, the pay-per-view and then in the end she overcame it in her hometown it was certainly better to have her win it here than on the pay-per-view um it was the right time and the right place and the pay-per-view match built up to this so you know a lot of what they did at the pay-per-view uh, i even said this like a week ago i mean it's like i know people get really annoyed by the ref bumps um when they would you do it just to do it um because you see New Japan doing it over and over and over again. And then sometimes it builds up to, you know, payoffs there too, but it's just so overdone. So if you watch that stuff, then anything, anytime you see it here, and WWE does it to a degree, so it kind of has that weird feeling of like, uh, this is bad, especially when the heel wins. But in, you know, in this case, it was the interference and the referee bumps were all built up to set up the cage match. And in the cage match in her hometown, she won. And, you know, so from a storytelling standpoint, it did pay off at the end. So, And it was clever because they, when they did that first ref bump and then they had to get the second referee in, uh, Aubrey runs down and the cage door opens up. And uh, Rebel and Jamie no... Hayter hadn't been down there. And so you're thinking, oh, my God, they're going to run in again. But, in fact, they the... locked the door. Yep. And uh, nobody got in, and nobody got out, and we got a clean finish with the uh, Thunder Fire driver into the thumbtacks, and uh, overall, I thought the whole thing was very well done. Very well it, done. It was very well put together, yes. Um, and, and, you know, it got over great. It got over great. It was a great crowd reaction, um, you know, very fitting conclusion to this, you know, year-long saga, you know, of waiting for the championship match and then finally getting it she gets screwed in the championship match and then a couple weeks later here you go so um yeah storytelling wise very good even though um they're whatever <laughs> people still cling to the idea people that don't watch still cling to the idea that somehow wwe does better storylines than AEW because they don't watch and actually pay attention hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.